I thought it would be fun if we could all kind of do a winter painting together. Um, you can make this kind of uh, Christmassy if you want to, or like a holiday theme, or you can make it just a winter scene. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna go through everything step by step so that you guys can follow along. And it's good because you can stop it or pause it uh, on the video in case you need to fix something or if you have forgotten something, you need to go grab it. Uh, so we're gonna get started right away. So the first thing we need to do, I have my two assistants here. <laughs> and they're probably gonna be talking and laughing and making fun of me through the whole video. We hope not though. Um, we need to start out and make two decisions. So the first decision is, oh, do this. you want your canvas? Everybody, this is a canvas. Mike, you didn't even take the plastic off of yours. Okay, uh, so if you haven't taken the plastic off your canvas, let's start out by doing that. Do so your decision is going to be, if you're gonna hold your canvas horizontally or vertically, the up and down one. It doesn't matter, it's totally up to you. Um, so what are you guys gonna do? Are you gonna hold it horizontal or are you gonna yes. hold it? We're gonna, we're making something called a landscape. So if you hold it the up and down way, it's gonna be a little bit more of a compact scene. If you hold it this way, you're gonna see a little bit more. It's up to you, it just depends on what you want to do. Horizontal is the other way. Can't get this up. All right. So, oh, and I have uh, Mr. Thompson doing some, some video work for me, so we, we appreciate that very much. Okay, so Chloe's going to hold hers horizontally. Mikey, which way are you going to hold yours? Horizontally. All right, so, and I have mine horizontally. So I also have on my plate, and we just start, we are just using paper plates, we're going to have some blue and some white. Those are the only two colors you need to start out. So the second decision you're gonna to need to make is, is this gonna be a daytime scene or a nighttime scene? Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do both. So I'm gonna start out with a nighttime scene. So this is, this is just my blue that I used. It's this blue right out of the bottle. And we're gonna use our one inch brush. And this is the brush that I'm gonna drop off to everybody today. Uh, mine looks a little bit different, but it's still a one inch brush. And we're gonna get some paint on our brush. And you're gonna decide how far down you want your sky to be. Do you want your sky to take up half of the picture? Do you want your sky to take up most of your picture? Do you want just a little bit of sky? Because we're gonna be putting snow down here underneath. So you just have to figure out, do I wanna see mostly sky? Do I wanna see mostly snow? Or do, we, do I wanna see an equal amount of each? So if you want to, you can do a little pencil line, and that would be called, does, do you guys know? What's the line that where the sky meets the land? The horizon. Yeah, horizon line. So that would be your horizon line. So you can do a little line if you want to, but it's not necessary, because if you go a little above or a little below where you plan, it's no big deal. So I'm gonna load up my brush with some paint. So Chloe and Mikey, you guys can put some blue paint on your plates. Do you, you guys can do this. this brush yep, right? one inch brush. And we're going to start out at the top of our painting, and we're going to go back and forth like this. Now, I am making my brush strokes nice and even. I'm not going like this. I'm not going scribble scrabble everywhere. I'm taking my time. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of water, a little tiny bit to make the paint go on a little bit easier. See this little spot here? You're, that means the paint is a little bit dry. So if you want it to go on a little bit smoother, you can just add a tiny bit. Don't go dunking your whole brush Mom, in the water. Yes, Mom. Um, Do we put the water um, in before we put it no, on? No, okay. start with paint. And then if you find that you need a little bit of water, then you can add the water. But okay. you just need Wait, to do that a little bit of a time. Bit of a okay, time. Here, do we start painting? Watch me first. I want you to watch first, and then you can start. All right, so back and forth. Here we go. Back and forth from edge to edge of your painting, okay? So you want to go off the edge of your painting, which is why you definitely need something underneath your 
whether you're using, I'm actually using watercolor paper, um, but you guys have canvases. So if you're using paper or canvas, all the way off the sides, nice and smooth back and forth. And this paint is pretty dry. So as I kind of run out of paint on my brush, I'm going back in, I'm dipping a corner of the brush into the water. I'm mixing the water all the way into the paint so I don't have too much water or too much paint. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like this. So you're going down the water. Yep. So I think I'm gonna go about halfway down. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay? All right, so you guys go ahead and do that. And now if you start to see, I don't know, like look at Mikey's. See how you can see the canvas through his paint? You might wanna add a little more paint. Get a little more paint on your brush. Back and forth, back and forth. All right. Now while they're finishing up that, I'm gonna show you how to make it look like, now this one looks like it's kind of a nighttime or like um, dusk. I'm gonna show you how to make it look like it's daytime. All you do, dip that brush into some white and go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. <clears throat> nice, smooth, even brush strokes. And blend that lighter blue into the dark blue. Now, you don't have to do that. That's only if you want to make it a little bit lighter. If you've painted your dark color and you're like, hmm, to make my picture look a little bit brighter like it's daytime. That's how easy it is to do. Yes, Claire. Mom, so if we, um, like I want Mike, that's way too much. So Mikey just took his whole brush, dumped the whole thing, and then way too much water. Look, look how, how much water you have in there. You gotta add more paint now. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what? so I want to kind of make it like it's like evening and the sun's about to go time down. Do I add a little <coughs> bit of white? Sure, that would be another thing that you can do. If you want to make it look like um, the sun has set, you can keep your the top of your picture, the top of your sky dark, and then as you go down, it gets a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. Hang on just a sec. Now, as I'm kind of blending colors here, I'm really paying attention to how much I'm going back and forth because you don't want to blend, 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 blend so much that everything turns the same color, unless that's what you want, unless you want your sky to be one color. If you want to have these kind of variations in the color, like see how mine is light at the bottom and darker at the top, that, then that means you have to stop blending when you're happy with it. Mom, All right? I have some white. You can, that's something you can do yourself. I'm going to um, get another paper. No, we're not going to get another paper. Um, all you need to do, all right, so Mikey's got an issue. Some of you might run into this issue too at all. All right. What's the, what's the issue with your picture? I did it too far down. Okay. That's totally fine, and I'll show you why in a second. So just leave it. Are you happy with the top? No. What are you not happy with? Too watery? No, I want, I want it like in the middle, like you want. It's fine though, and I'll show you why, trust me, okay? If you wanna have a little more paint at the top though, you can do that, because your, your picture is a little bit watery. Now, Freeze, that is a super watery brush. Let's get some paper towels. I think paper towels were something on the list that you should have at the ready. So Mike, take your brush, blot your brush, so that it doesn't have so much water in it. <laughs> Wrap the paper towel around your brush. Um, do we add the, do we wash our brush before we add the white? No, you don't need to. Nope. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are completely changing, like because you're gonna blend that white into the blue, that you know you don't have to to um, to change brushes. Um, one more quick thing I want to show you. Yep, that's good. Is if you wanted to do a sunset. should have taken the wrappers off of my paint before we started this. If you want to do a sunset, you can take a little bit of red 
You can do peach. Peach is made by mixing white, uh, red, and yellow. Mike, that's, that's a lot of white paint you got going there. That looks good. Uh, peach is made with red, yellow, and white. Um, you can mix up a peach to add to the bottom to make it look like a sunset. Uh, I would not recommend doing yellow at the bottom of blue. Uh, how come? What happens if you over mix yellow with blue? It turns brown. Mm. I mean what? Green. I mean green. Oh yeah, it turns green. We don't really want a green sky. Um, if you blend blue and yellow, there is a way to do it, but you just have to be really, really careful and really, really light. I mean, you can mix that if you want a polluted sky. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna mix up a pink. Now, once again, you don't have to do the sunset. You can keep your dark sky. You can keep just a daytime sky. I'm just kind of showing you guys some different options so that you can figure out what you wanna do. So I have a little bit of pink on my brush and I didn't even rinse it. You can rinse it if you want. Um, if you rinse your brush, if you rinse the blue off the brush, um, the pink will show up a little bit more. I'm gonna blend it in so it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna take my pink at the bottom Whoa. And I'm just doing some little brush strokes like this. And I want to keep my, my, when I push my brush onto my picture, I want to keep that very light. If you push that paint really hard into that paint, the, um, the background color the, onto the paper, everything's going to get kind of squished together and you're, the colors are all going to blend and be the same color. You want to keep your brush strokes, once again, really, really light so that you're able to see those different colors. All it right. looks like that medicine commercial. A medicine commercial? Yeah, it's like like <laughs> Sky Rizzy or something. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, so there, I got my little sunset. Now, if you do a sunset, if you add some color in there, you're like, I don't really like that. Um, all you do, then you can rinse your brush, go back into your blue, and just go right over it, okay? And you gotta work a little bit quickly because your paint is gonna dry, but you have a little bit of time where your paint is wet, where you can kinda say, go back and say, ah, oh, I changed my mind, I don't like that, and go back over it, okay? All right, so I have kinda like a sunset sky, it's a little bit dark, uh, lighter on the bottom where the sun, has, because the sun has set, and then it's got a teeny bit of color in it, okay? What color All did right. you mix again? Uh, I used red, you got, I mean, you guys just stick with the blue, bless you. All right, next step, we are going to rinse our brush. Now let me show you how to rinse your brush. You might just think, oh, why does she need to show us this? But there is actually a way. So you take your brush, hold your cup of water so that it doesn't spill. Chloe, what you're like really being aggressive. You just kind of push the brush. You don't need to like spin it wildly, okay? All right, and then you want to kind of um, rub your brush on the edge of the glass or the bowl so that you get as much water off the brush as possible. You don't want to have a dripping wet brush, all right? So let's rinse that brush, and then we're actually going to use the same colors that we already have. Mike, rinse your brush. Okay, use a towel. paper towel to blot all the extra water off. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start on our snow for the bottom. So. We're gonna have a very, very light blue. So a white, mostly white with maybe just a touch of blue, okay? And I'll show you why we're gonna do that in just a second. So I've got a really, really, really light blue. Now, if you want your snow to be flat, you can just go right across and make, I'll show you how to do that, a flat line like this. But I think it would be a little more interesting to do some hills. So I'm going to take my brush. Now you want to make sure maybe you have a little bit of water in that paint so that when you go all the way across your canvas or your paper that it goes on smooth. So I'm going to start out. I'm going to go up like this. I'm going to come back down. I'm going to do like a big mountain back here and all the way across. And then underneath I'm going to fill that in and I'm following the line of my hills. I made a line for a hill. I'm not going flat underneath. I'm following the line that I did. And then once you have it so that you're down to the part where it's more level, then you can just go back and forth. Oh, my paint is running off my brush. 
I'm gonna dip back in. I'm gonna get a little bit of water on there. Um, Mom, do we mix the blue into the white or the white into the blue? I would mix the blue into the white. Okay. That's a good question. Because if you mix the white and the blue, you're just gonna have to, how come you guys are still doing sky? Because I wanna make it a little bit more. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom now. Now, as I get towards the bottom, I'm actually gonna add a little bit more blue. And the reason for that is, it's gonna kinda look like the light is shining on the top of the hills or the mountains that you have. And down here is more of a shadowy part. It just kinda adds a little bit of, it's called dimension or depth to your painting. Kinda makes it look real. You don't want it to be all one color because when you look outside, when you, if you looked at snowy hills, it most likely wouldn't look the same color. There'd be different shades. There'd be the blue reflecting from the sky. There might mm, be white hills, interrupting, white hills in the background where the sunshine is shining down on it. So it just makes it kind of interesting when you have a little bit of variation of color in there. All right. So there we go. There's our hills, okay? All right, so Chloe, I put the, put the, uh, oh, is someone at the door? <laughs> Ben's miming to me. Your plate is in the middle of the picture. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, put your, put the thing on Chloe's. All right, so see the, what Chloe's doing right now? It's keep going, blue. keep going. But it's too blue. Okay, see the way that she's stopping? She's going back. If it's getting too blue, Dip just in white. Get a little more white. Okay. All right. And then some nice smooth brush strokes. There you go. Mom. And go all the way to the bottom. Looks like some mountains on back behind the Really cool. So see Mikey's? Mikey just said it looks like some mountains, like this hill is in front of that hill. And let me show you how if you don't have that and you want to add something like that in, like you want to make a hill down in front, watch how we can do that. I'm gonna take some more white, and I'm gonna, can you come over here now? <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna take some white, and then I might, because I've got a little bit of pink in the sky, I'm gonna take a little bit of pink too. And I'm and gonna mix snow. a little bit of that, yep. I'm going to mix a little bit of that into my paint, and watch, I'm going to create a hill that's going to come right down in front, so it's going to go like this. And you're going to blend back and forth, back and forth and back and forth, all the way down to the bottom. Okay? So now I've got two hills. Now let's say I want to add another one. Any other one. Look at that. Now I've got three hills. Okay, so I've got some mountains way off in the distance. Then I've got a little hill back here, and then I have another one coming down in front. Okay, now I know maybe I'm making this look a little bit easy. I've also done this for, I was an art major. I was a painting major in college, so I did this for What's a that? really, really long time. And What's I took a art. Major? A major is when you choose what you'd really like to do in college. So. That's what I, I was a painting major. So I had a lot, a lot, a lot of practice at this. I taught at an art school for almost 15 years. I took art lessons since I was 11. So I've, I've had a lot of practice. So if your picture is not coming out the way you want it to at first, don't get frustrated. This takes practice. Just have fun kind of doing the process and you can always, once you know how to do it and you've done this once, you can always go back and you can do it again and learn from what you mistake you might have made in the first painting, um, and then go back and kind of figure out what you want to do the second time, and then keep doing it again and again. All right, so we're going to stop for there for right now. What you can do, Chloe and Mikey are still working on theirs. I'm almost done. Chloe's just a, so see how even Chloe's hills are really white and bright. Mikey's are a little bit darker. Uh, I'm going to show Mikey how he can make his hills. It's called a highlight. No, okay. I don't want white. You don't want white hills? I want it to be like nighttime and the snow's like... All right, so are you happy with that? 
Perfect. All right. Oh, That's, I get it. If he wanted to highlight it, he could take some white on his brush and he could go over the outline of his hills and then blend down. And then it would be a little bit lighter in the back and then it would be darker in front, but he's happy with that the way it is. So How do you make the it. hills in the background again? That's something you have to kind of do from the beginning, but you can go back and make that hill line. That, so Chloe, you've, you're kind of, all right, you're making a pretty common mistake. You keep going over and over it on, with it. You wanna kind of do it and then leave it. You don't wanna keep going back up to the top and then doing it over and over. That, okay. you, you, you might end up over blending. You've got some nice different colors in there. Just leave it. Okay. All right, so we're gonna stop here for right now. You guys can go get a hair dryer. I think I put that on your list of things to get. So we're gonna use a hair dryer to blow dry your paintings. When you're blow drying your painting, don't get too close. You wanna be like at least six to eight inches away. And um, don't stick your finger in your picture to see if it's dry. You'll know if it's dry when the paint is not shiny anymore. That means it's not wet. All right, so everybody stop there, dry your painting. And we'll continue the so next So this is part two of our winter painting lesson. Um, we have blow dried our paintings and we actually switched our water too. We uh, dumped out the dirty water and refilled it with some clean water. And we have some sketch paper and some pencils because now we're gonna kind of figure out what we wanna put in our scene. So, I'm going to start out by redrawing on my paper, and it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a sketch. This is just so you can kind of get some ideas clear in your head. So I'm going to start. I have these mountains in the back, and then I've got a hill here, and then I've got a hill here. Okay, so that's kind of what my painting looks like. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, let me figure out what I want to do in this background. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some very small trees. Now, why are they going to be small? Who knows? Cause, Go ahead, both of you. Because they're going to be in the distance. Yeah, because they're far away. So they're going to be pretty small. And I'm going to have them just kind of dotting the little hillside there. Mom. Yes? You, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> what? You should make a Christmas tree farm. Oh my goodness, that might be an awesome idea for you to do. Mm -hmm. So you guys can figure, yeah, you can do whatever you want to do. You do not have to do what I'm doing. You can, I'm, I'm just, this is just meant for you guys to get some ideas and then you can go off and sketch whatever you'd like to. So I'm going to do some evergreen trees and then I'm going to do some really tiny um, regular tree chunks in the distance here. Okay. And it's kind of nice to have some of them going up over the horizon line right here just to kind of vary it up a little bit all right so I think I'm happy with that in um, the distance this side here um, I think I might actually do like a little log cabin so I'm gonna draw a little log cabin that looks like this and it's gonna have a little door. I might even put a little reef on it because that'd be kind of cute. It's gonna have some windows. I might even do a little smoking chimney. That might be cute. And then I think a little pathway. And as my pathway gets closer to us, closer to the viewer, it gets bigger because things, when they go off in the distance, they get smaller. When they're closer to us, they get bigger. And then finally on my hill in front here um let's see i might do i might do a little deer hey, I'm looking deer. out over the scene so i'm gonna include a couple little uh i think i'm gonna make some copies of some ideas like how to draw a deer how to draw a rabbit um if you guys want to include some animals in your picture i'm gonna put a little deer the deer is kind of surveying the scene so here he is. Now, I'm also a very much, this is a very chubby deer. He's had a, he's had a lot of food throughout the winter. He's been very well fed. Um, I'm a little out of practice with my drawing too. So the good thing about when you do sketching is that if you mess up and you don't like it, you can just grab a new piece of paper, erase it, um, and start over. You can also, uh, one little hint when you're drawing is to draw lightly 
don't do, don't do big heavy lines because they're harder to erase. If you draw lightly, then it's easy to erase, okay? So here, he's got some footsteps in the snow. And I think I'm happy with that. Now, another idea, kind of a different thing for some of you, if you held your painting this way and you have your hill, you could do a big giant Christmas tree or just a regular evergreen tree. You could put some, um, if you wanted to put ornaments on it, you could put some animals around it. It's a little bunny rabbit. Um, where's another piece of paper? Let me grab it and I'll show you one more idea. Oh, it's snowing. Wait, what? Just look outside what? and it's snowing. <laughs> All right, so here's another idea. Like, Chloe might want to think about this because she's got enough room. She has one big hill. She might want to do a little pond like this. Oh, yeah. And maybe she can put some ice skaters on it. Now, when you're drawing some water, Mike. Okay, so another option I wanted to show you, um, and if, you know, if you have something like this, which is what Chloe has, she's got one big hill. You could think about doing a pond with, so here's her one big hill. She could do a pond with some ice skaters on it. So here you could do a pond in the middle like this. Now, in order to make the pond look realistic, when you are drawing the pond, you don't want to do just here's a hill and here's a circle, okay? That's not really how water lives in nature. You can do you kind of want to go across and do these flat lines. So you kind of take it over here, come across the land this way, okay? Instead of just like a round circle or a perfect oval, unless it's a man-made pond, in which case it would be, be a perfect uh, oval or something. But to make it look really kind of realistic, like it's really sitting in the land, you can do these kind of uh, different lines and different shapes, okay? Um, Chloe actually had a good idea too. Chloe, hold your picture up. Chloe's going to do a snowman. a snowman. That would be really cute. And she's got a little reindeer on the hillside. And she's got some water. And All right, so you guys can really use your imagination. Um, sketch out your idea. And um, I'm going to show you how to just do some basic things right now. So I am now going to get a flat brush. So I think on our list of supplies, I said that you needed a small flat brush. So I don't know if you can see. This is what I'm using. Okay. If you don't have that, you could also use a thin, you could definitely use a thin brush for the, if you want to do some trees way back here. <laughs> it might be a little harder when you're coming, if you want to do a bigger tree up front to use this kind of a brush you'd be better off with a thin flat brush like this. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of green because I'm gonna start off with my evergreen trees. And I'm gonna get some brown on my paint briefly as well. And those are just gonna be for my regular trees. So let's start out like this. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to use both brushes for the trees in the background. This is a really just a regular thin brush. Uh, when you are doing something with small details, you wanna make sure your paint is nice and smooth on your brush. So add a little, little bit of water. You don't want it like super watery. And then dip it in your paint. And then when you lift your brush up from the paint, twist your brush like this. Twirl it in the paint so that all the bristles, when you lift your brush up from the paint, are all nice and tight and together. Look at the difference. When I smush that brush and look, are you gonna be able to paint anything nice and small with a brush that looks like that? No way. So you twirl your brush like this and then kind of drag it out of the paint and that kind of guarantees that when you lift it up out of the paint, all your bristles are nice and tight and together. All right, so I'm gonna start out back here and I'm gonna do, now my, my, I did not blow dry my picture, it's still a little bit wet. So it might be, it might blend into the, with the paint a little bit. All right, here's a fir tree, here's a fir tree. One here, one here. 
And then if you want to, the shape of a fir tree, it's basically, um, I'm doing kind of a, a line down to start. And then as I go down the tree, it's getting bigger and bigger. So line down, very small branches at the top. And then as I come down the tree, it's getting a little bit bigger. And then you can fill in with paint afterwards. Okay, uh-oh, this is actually um, a good mistake that I just made. So I just dragged my green paint into the front of my picture. Is that a disaster? You might think it is. You could do one of two things. If you get it quick enough, acrylic paint is kind of nice in that you can wipe it off. So let's try that first. I'm gonna dip my brush into the water and I'm gonna really lightly rub my paint and I'm gonna try to lift it off. Now, I'm not going up and down. I'm to, in order to lift the paint up off my uh, painting, I'm going along the lines of what I did there. Now, it, kind of, it mostly came up, but I'm still seeing some of that smudge. So when I go to work on this portion of my painting, I'm gonna put something over that so I, I can kind of hide my mistake that I made, all right? So if you make a mistake and you do something like that, you can always just cover it up with something else. Well, first of all, if you wanna to try to lift the paint up off the picture, get a wet paper towel and then kind of rub it really lightly. Um, if it's still smudged, just put something there in that spot. Chloe, did you have a question? Um, yeah. <coughs> Since the green is kind of a little dark, mm -hmm. and um, on your sketch that you did before, you could make that a footprint. Oh, that's a good idea right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could definitely, because it kind of does look like there's um, like a little impression in the snow. Great idea. That's something, if you're a painter, you kind of learn how to do that. You learn how to work with the mistakes that you make and figure out, hmm, how can I now incorporate that into my painting? and make it look like that's what I meant to do. That's what I think is kind of the most fun part of painting, is trying to figure out how to work with, because it's not always gonna come out exactly, actually it probably never, no, no painting that I ever did came out exactly the way I had planned it. So I think it's really fun to try to figure out, all right, how can I work with this mistake that I just made? Um, all right, so I'm gonna stop there, there's my fir trees. Now I'm going very quick to do this. Um, you guys can stop the video at any point and take your time with it. I'm gonna add a few. Here's another thing about when you're doing very small detail work. Hold your brush at the bottom, towards the bottom of the small brush. How can you have control over the brush if you're holding it way back here? You wanna hold it towards the bottom, just like a pencil, and when I, go to work on my painting, I'm not resting my whole hand on it. Now, if I was sure that my whole painting was dry, I could, but mine is still wet. So I'm putting one finger down just to kind of steady my hand. And then I'm gonna add my tree branches in, okay? Now, once again, that is something that takes a lot of practice. So when, when I was um, your age, I did not have that much control over my brush. It's something that I've kind of learned how to do over the years. So don't get frustrated if, especially when you're doing teeny tiny little detail work, don't get frustrated if things, if it looks a little smudgy or if a line comes out thicker than you want it to. Another good trick is, especially when you're working with very small details, when you're looking at a painting right close up, you're gonna notice all the mistakes. So what you have to do when you're painting is like look away for a little bit and then stand way back from your painting and look at, <laughs> look, look at it from a distance. And when you're looking at it far away, you don't notice that many mistakes. Most people, when they look at your picture, they're not gonna be like right up here, like, oh, look at that mistake that they made. They're gonna look at it from far away, okay? All right, so there are my trees. Where was my original sketch? Let's see. All right, I think that's good. Um, the next thing I'm gonna add in, I'm gonna do my little roof over here. Here's my house. Now, if you guys want to, um, you can sketch this stuff in with pencil. 
Just do it very lightly, okay? Because if you make a mistake, you can erase on, um, on acrylic on the canvas, but sometimes it can smudge. Um, I would suggest sketching in your work first. Don't just paint it, that's very hard to do. So sketch it in first. Um, just keep your pencil lines really, really light. And keep in mind that you're gonna be going over them with paint, so you're not gonna see all of your pencil lines. All right, so here's my house, and it's a little uneven, so I'm gonna even it out. Um, let's see, I'm gonna make a festive little red door on my house, right here. I'm gonna give it a red, oh, look what I did again, I must have keep dipping my finger into the same spot of green paint. Here's my little red chimney right here. And I'm gonna show you something cool that you can do, like a cool way to make um, smoke. Uh, now if you wanna do smoke, most of the time I would have you use, you'd use black with a tiny bit of white to make like a gray. I'm being lazy right now and I'm gonna do a little bit of brown with some white. You can do very lightly, just kind of dab in a little bit of smoke, and then you can take your finger and smudge it, and it'll look like smoke kind of rising off into the distance, okay? And I wanted to do a little pathway in front of my house, so I'm gonna take some dark, not dark blue, I'm sorry, some, um, a blue that's a couple shades lighter I'm sorry, a couple shades darker than my snow to show that, okay, here's my little path. It almost looks like a little shadow and I'm gonna have it coming across the hill like this, okay? And then if you wanted to, on your house, if you wanna make it look like there are lights on in the house, you can do um, a light yellow. Or multicolored because because like you do like red, green, yellow, blue, because like... Oh, I, you know what? Good idea. I was talking about like lights in the windows, oh. like to show that like people are home. But you could also definitely do Christmas lights as a decoration on your house. That would look really cool. So here's my windows like this. So you can get as detailed with your house as you want. I could put a little wreath around it here at the top of the house. All right, if I wanted to do um, lights at the top, that would look really cute. You could dot the lights, dip a pencil into paint, and just dot little tiny circular lights around it. That would be cute. All right, and then I think the last thing I said I was gonna add into my painting is the, I was gonna do a little deer. So I'm gonna start out with, and I'm gonna, I'll make up a little page on how to draw some, a couple of animals. So this is my deer. I have a circle for the head. I have a little pointed nose. So I have some little antlers here. Antlers. Okay. He's got a long neck. He's got a little body that goes like this. Kind of like an oval shape. And then he's got deer have kind of long, thin legs. And start if you're doing something like this, start out with them very thin because you can always go back and make them thicker. It's much harder if you make something too thick, a line too thick, to go back and make it smaller. So if you if you have any um, any doubt, go make a thinner line first, and then you can always go back and make it thicker. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to add a little tail like that. All right. And now, if you want to make little footprints in the snow. Kind of the same idea as the path. You would do a couple shades darker of the blue. And you just dot, do, 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 do. there. You just walked into the picture. All right? One last step I wanna show you, which is really fun, is if you wanna add snow, like falling snow to your picture. Yes, Chloe? Um, could you, since there's a type of deer called the white-tailed deer, could you add some, like use the back of your brush and dip it in the white and then put white spots on yeah, the Yeah, you deer? could definitely do that. That would be really cute. All right, 
So I've got a white, um, I'll do a moon first actually. I'm gonna take some of my white on my small brush and here I can dot in a little bit of two last things I'm showing you. You can dot a little snow. Don't cover up all the green. You just wanna make it look like there's some snow sitting on some of your evergreens and then on some of your trees that are back here, if that's what you chose to do. Okay, so I've added a little snow. I'm gonna add a little bit of snow on the roof of my house. Okay, and then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a little moon, a little full moon over here, because my sky is looking a little bit empty. So I got a small circle. Now watch how I make the moon glow. Kind of rub a circle like that. And then you can add the moon back in afterwards. That's kind of a cool trick. Now you could leave it like that, or if you want to make it look like, like it's snowing, go back with that one inch brush and make sure it's all cleaned off. And then you're going to dip in the water. Now the, when you're doing this, the water needs to, the paint needs to be pretty thin. I'm going to show you how to do some falling snow. So the paint needs to be pretty thin, but it can't be like dripping off the brush. So you kind of have to figure out what the right consistency is. It's better to make the mistake of having the paint be thicker than thinner to start. Because if the paint is too thin, we're gonna splatter it onto the painting and it'll make these big like watery splatters. So you kind of have to figure out, you can try it out on a piece of paper, on a piece of uh, construction paper to figure out what the consistency of your paint needs to be. All right, so I have my brush, my one inch brush. I'm gonna take my pointer finger and I'm gonna splatter my paint all over, the picture. all over my picture. Now this brush is a little drippy, but it's drippy on the, the this part of it, not the actual paint part. And that's kind of a cool way to make a really snowy picture. All right, and I think that wraps it up. Now, if you guys need, if anyone really makes like a big mistake and they're in tears and you're really unhappy with something you're done, you've done and you've need, you need some help with it, you can always have mom or dad take a picture and email me and I'm happy to help you fix your mistake. Um, the other thing is you have to kind of be, be forgiving of yourself. You guys are just starting out to paint, paint a lot of you, so you have to, don't get too frustrated with it. Just have, it's meant to be kind of fun, all right? So I hope everybody enjoys this, and you, this is something that you can do uh, one time. You can keep practicing. You can change your scene. You can create different scenes. You can make copies of this to give it to somebody as a gift. You can even um, go to Staples, and they can print your painting on cardstock and make an actual card out of it. All right, so I hope everyone has fun doing it. And maybe if we um, all get these finished within the next week or two, maybe we can do a Zoom meeting where we all show each other our paintings. And the coolest thing will be to see how different they all are, because that's the most fun thing about art, is seeing how everyone creates things differently. Okay, bye guys.